Bad things at home are much worse when you live in a camper. This video might talk you out of full-time RV living. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And this video is actually about the not amazing things of full-time RV living. Yeah, it's not all roses and sunshine out here. <laughs> it's not. Now, we love it. We've been doing it for two and a half years. We want to keep it real for you and tell you the really bad parts. I mean, this is kind of a downer of a video, but I think it's, it's honest. Yeah, I think it's stuff that you need to think about before getting into this life. Some things you don't even think about in your house that are, are just can be a nightmare out here. That's right. So we're going to go from bad to worse in our list. So the first one is mail. Yep. That's one that I was thinking about when I said there are things you, you don't even, it doesn't even cross your mind most of the time. In fact, I don't remember ever thinking about mail when I was in my sticks and bricks house. So imagine that you're expecting a package and it's supposed to arrive on Tuesday and you get a note that it's going to arrive a day late. It might be a major inconvenience if you were expecting the part and, and, and you had something that you wanted to use it for. Well, what about your bike wheels? Just take a breath. We messed up your bike too. Look, your bike's, your bike's broken. Oh, I know. I bent the wheel. So we had plans to to drive 1,100 miles over about four days. Six days. Six days. Yeah. But we had lots of stops. And this bike wheel was supposed to arrive on Tuesday, and it didn't arrive on Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it shipped next day. It turned out to be almost a week. We were really stressed because it would involve changing, what, four camping reservations, yep. Yep. waiting on it, because we couldn't leave and, and get it because we were going to be hundreds of miles away. Sure. We drove 200 miles to get a package that arrived after we left. It's same situation. It was late, and uh, we drove a 200-mile round trip to go get it. Yeah, actually, the, the one I was thinking about it was when we were oh. waiting for the tile, and it showed up like couple days after we left. We, we had to pay somebody 50 bucks to drive to yep. a UPS store to ship it up to us. Yep. We, Let's talk about the next bad to worse and that is getting sick. You know in a house what do you do? Well you call in sick to work and you're, you lay up on the bed and maybe your friends come over and bring you meals or give you rides. It's a whole lot different out here. Yeah if one hopefully just one of you gets sick you know you're in an area you don't you're not close to home so you're not close to your doctor so you're looking for a place to go if you need to you know if you need medical assistance hopefully well, you can just ride it out in the in the rig and we'll talk about riding it out if you have travel plans then you're actually trying to travel while sick i mean that's got to be the worst I and mean, oh, if you yeah. just want to and what if you have a problem like a broken ankle or something like that there isn't a camper made or a fifth wheel a motorhome or anything without steps so you're having to deal with getting in and out <laughs> And if you're solo, I mean, that's a physical life, you know, reeling up hoses and stuff like that. Yeah, the way I slid into her life was, <laughs> <laughs> well, she broke her hand test riding a, a bike. Long story short, I came to where she was and with a plan to travel with her for six weeks or so until her hand healed. You're still here. And I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. But it's every RVer's worst nightmare to, particularly if you're solo, to lose the, that physical ability, you know, to get injured on the road or, or to get sick. It's life changing out here. <laughs> it's a major stress. Yeah. The next one is weather. I can honestly say that when I lived in a house, I didn't really look at the weather. I was not a problem. But in a camper, no matter what camper you have, you're so vulnerable. Now, when I lived in a house, it used to be sort of the joke that, you know, mobile home parks attract bad weather, right? Mobile home parks are always the ones that are lost in floods or hurricanes or high winds yeah. or thunderstorms. Well, guess what? <laughs> We're not even as sturdy as a mobile home. No. We're not anchored to the ground. No. So any kind of wind, rain, hurricanes, just a bad storm makes you go, oh gosh, we got to make sure that we're going to be okay. We may have to move. You're always in tune with the weather. You're always watching it when you're living in an RV. And right now where we're at, for instance, we know that tonight is going to get down into the low 20s. So. You know, we got to make sure we have plenty of propane because we, we got to keep the belly warm. 
We gotta keep us warm. We gotta <laughs> keep my keep belly us, warm. Yeah, keep us warm too. Yeah. We Man also are, have to undo our hose tonight because, yes. it, and, and all our hoses, because yeah. it is going to be 25, it's going to be freezing. Yep, you can get heated hoses. Mm. But it's about that awareness. You're so much more vulnerable out here. You're vulnerable to the weather. You're also vulnerable to fire. I mean, you're just very, it's, it's, it's a different mindset out here is you're more yep. aware of your vulnerability and you have to be prepared to move should something happen. The, the next one would be repairs. If, if, if this thing, and we're in this situation right now, if it has to go into the shop for an extended period, you're gonna lose your home. How often does that happen? If you live in a house, how often do you have to leave your house for a repair? I mean, that's rare. It would yeah, be tenting, uh, tenting for, uh, on the West Coast we have termites. If your house has to be tented, you have to move out. Right, and then also if you're doing major renovations, like new kitchen or something like that, you would have to leave. But other than that, you can pretty much rest assured that no matter what your house needs, you still get to live in it. Yeah. Unlike with our rig, or if you have a Class A and you need work done on the engine. Going into this life, this was my worst fear, is that, we would, that I would lose my home to some major repair. And that's exactly what we're going through. We are gonna lose our rig for three to six weeks. We have to move out. We have the huge expense of the hotel. We mm -hmm. have the huge inconvenience of having to pack up. Well, what do we need? We also will probably have extra expense as far as you know going out to eat and yeah. that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, we're not gonna be able to prepare food in a hotel the way we would in, in our rig. And the worst thing about living on the road versus living in your house is when a family member back home or a close friend back home is sick or dying. Yeah, I got a call about a week ago and uh, from my brother and he sprung the news on me that he has pancreatic cancer. We were on our way to, to where we are right now. When we got here, I immediately made plans to get a flight to uh, Las Vegas where he lives to spend some time with him. It's bad enough if this happens in your hometown, but the fact that you have the stress of having to, you know, park the rig and get on a plane and go, mm -hmm. oh, that it is the worst. Yeah, I mean, it was made somewhat easier. Had this happened when I was solo, of course, I would have been looking for a place to, to store the rig. I didn't even know how long I was going to be staying. It depended on, you know, what I found when I got there. And, uh, yeah, what condition he was in, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wasn't, I was certainly not going to get on a plane and come back here if he was, you know, days away from dying. So. Yeah. Phew. Yeah, it's, yeah. This is the worst right now that mm -hmm. we're going through. Mm -hmm. but, but we still want to do it. But I still <laughs> not looking to stop. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's just, this is one of those, one of those major hurdles that, that we're having to get over. Mm-hmm. So on the bad to worst, let us know what we've missed. If there's any bad to worst that you want to share, just let us know in the comments. Yeah, I'd love to hear it.